Um, if there's, you know, uh, what we tend to do with our recordings is we'll edit them down so the discussion will be edited off. So once we start um, talking there, please feel free to talk and then we'll, um, we'll take that little bit off. Um, and, and we'll share that recording with everybody if you wanted to share it with other colleagues or people who couldn't make it today. Um, my name is Jim Turner. I'm currently chair of LE SIG, which is a special interest group that's connected with the Association for Learning Technology. Let me just share our little web page here if you've not come across us before. We are trying to support learning technologists and other people in trying to improve the research around learning technology. And that's one of the reasons why I was excited to have these two speakers today. Um, yeah, so we're part of that larger uh, old group. I'm saying I'm the current uh, chair because we are about to launch our elections. I'm standing down in September. So if you like what we do, you might want to get involved at some point and uh, get into that. We also have a whole selection of events. Um, yeah, hold on. Where's my chat? which I'll share with you in a minute. Uh, here we go. So we have other events that we're running this month. We've um, got a couple of uh, events turning up. But I'm sure you didn't hear, uh, come here to listen to me go on about stuff. So I am going to hand over to Clay and Matt to run the rest of the session. I'll be on hand, Clay, just in case you know, I'll keep an eye on the chat and these sorts of things, but Thanks. Um, you take it from here, you guys. Thanks. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, we don't usually use Collaborate, so bear with us. Um, so, yes, I'm uh, Dr. Clay Granston, and my colleague over here is, is Dr. Matthew Hindmarsh. We both uh, are at Liverpool John Moores University, and we also teach on the uh, sport business course. Um, and I hope today we're going to uh, well, we're going to cover a few things. And, and when Matt and I were, were, were sort of going through what we should show um, uh, around around mastery paths, um, we thought we'd change this up a little bit. So we're actually going to do one from a student view, just to, just to let you see what it actually looks like. Because every time we try to explain what one of these are, we end up um, making it sound far more complicated than it actually is. But um, essentially is a, is a flexible learning pathway and we'll discuss about some of those other types of pathways that you could possibly use I guess um, but also come at this from a uh, teaching and learning point of view as well and give some justification to why we've used a mastery path um, we'll also go through a little bit about the process and how it actually works in practice um, We'll also show you some of the results of the mastery path. I think currently, Matty, and you, you might be able to correct me here, but we've got data from over a thousand students now. Is that right? Yeah, and it's across it's across three different three different courses as well within the, within the business across, school yeah. at Liverpool John Moores University. So it's a big, yeah, it's a big so, cohort. So we've been doing this for around three years, but we'll show you what a mastery path is at the moment. They're just words, aren't they? Uh, and we'll give you some reflections on on the different iterations that we've uh, that we've done around around mastery paths too. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll, you'll have a good idea about what a mastery path is, and um, hopefully we'll, we'll we'll be able to show you the impact that it's had on our students' learning, which is a yeah a tricky one to measure. But um, uh, if we just start now, I think. Um, Matty, did you want to go through this first and then we'll jump in at the end? Yeah, I guess I think just first of all, Clyde, I don't know if your slides were moving on there because they seem to be frozen for me. OK, I think you might be sharing the wrong screen. Uh, if you've launched the slideshow, it might be running. Oh, on OK. If you... OK, let's try it again. Is right if we just 
do that, I guess. We'll have to, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Probably the best way to do it, isn't it? Go on, Matty. You, um, you yeah, so on, I think, no, it's not quite clear. I think, yeah, so when, when, when we usually start these types of presentations that myself and Clay have done previously, what we always do is try and, I guess, bring it to bring it to life and give you a sense of why we come to implement and how we come to think about the, the, the use of mastery paths. And thinking about the, the, the start of this journey really uh, comes from, from a couple of different strands of thought that myself and Clay have had uh, based on our reflections whilst, whilst teaching over the last, well, three, four years in, in, in particular when we've been collaborating with each other. Um, and I'm sure you're all aware that particularly at the start of the first year, uh, student transitions are probably one of the most important times in a, in, in a student's uh, lifespan whilst at, whilst at university. Um, and often what, what tends to happen is that how they uh, settle into university often impacts upon their success moving forward, uh, not only in the first year, but also moving into the second and third year. And there's an increasing amount of research that, 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 that's coming out uh, that talks around the fact that actually there's an increasing number of students that are finding the transition from uh, whether it be from higher edu uh, from further education to higher education or alternatively coming from the world of work into into higher education is something that is that is increasingly difficult um, and that can be for a variety of different different reasons from um, moving away from home and therefore kind of trying to settle in and, and get accustomed to to that particular uh, city or, or, or area or town in which they are residing in. It could be to do with the actual academic success as well, um, in terms of there being a, a, a step up potentially in what is expected of them from from what they've previously done uh, to, to, to the higher education setting. So there's, a, a, I guess, a multitude of factors that, that impact on that increasing number of, of students that are finding the transition difficult. Um, and what research has also highlighted is that the, within that transition period, um, what tends to happen is that you find yourself being in a position whereby students are not necessarily aware of what's expected of them until their first form experience of assessment happens and occurs within the higher education setting. Um, and from this, what, what we found as, a, a, as a, a team, particularly myself and Clay, is that when looking at that student transition period, what we found is that often students are inundating us with emails and overloading us with emails about certain things we might have potentially covered within the induction period. Uh, like every student goes goes on um, within the first week, couple of weeks whilst at university. Um, and within that, what tends to happen is we cover policy around uh, different areas of the, the, the institution. Um, and students often find that quite overbearing and therefore are constantly asking questions uh, through emails in terms of university policy or any other course matters, or particularly in regards to what we're covering in the mastery path as well in terms of referencing. So we find ourselves kind of being in a position whereby a lot of, we're having a lot of um, time spent uh, elsewhere, actually having to deal with, with, with these concerns that students are, are raising around things that we've potentially already covered inside the classroom. Um, and I think what's important when thinking about mastery pass, which we'll come to in, in a couple of minutes of time, is that students uh, often have uh, different paths to learning in the sense that they all have different skill levels, they all have different expectations and experiences, and they'll all have a different way in which they learn. Um, and it's about trying to cater for that individual need, um, which is becoming more prevalent uh, in terms of trying to make sure that students are at the fore of, of, of all the teaching and learning that takes place. However, with our course in particular, and I know Clay will attest to this, we've seen within the last five years, our student numbers go from being anywhere between 40 students all the way up to now as an in-course, uh, an in intake for first year, um, exceeding 100 to 110 students. So it's thinking about how can we create that individual 
learning need and make sure that we're catering for every student, but do it in a way whereby it's not uh, overburdening our own our own time uh, because of that fact of trying to need to need to support each student through through that individualized process. So I think that, that the key thing here that we're trying to, 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 to get across is that we actually started to think about that and go, well, from these student reflections, we're getting to a position whereby maybe some of the things that we potentially previously done as a as a team might not necessarily reflect what 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 needs to be done now moving forward. Thanks, Matty. So we I guess I guess we're, we're getting closer, aren't we, to what mastery paths are a little bit of background there. Um, one of the, one of the uh, ways that I sort of came up with this, I guess, um, is I was doing, um, as, as most of us have to, uh, training video. And as you, I'm sure you're aware, doing lots of training videos over the years, um, I thought, how could we how could we use something like this? And, and I thought back to this sort of a, a choose your own adventure books. And I don't know if anyone remembers choose your own adventure books, but um, I mean, I'm not that old. I'm only 40. But um, I mean, I, I did uh, I did use choose your own adventure books. If you haven't played them, essentially you you choose a page and, and you go down a different a specific pathway. And every time you read the book, you could essentially have a, a different path, uh, but get to the same goal, which is the end. And so we, we were thinking about this and we were thinking about how we could do something for, as Matty has mentioned already, some of the some of the tasks that perhaps the students should be uh, should be learning outside of the classroom. Uh, and certainly one of those um, would be uh, referencing. And also we've done a mastery path um, where students have to look at the systems when they first get here. And we'll discuss about sort of the suitability of mastery paths at various points of assessment uh, as, as we go along as well. But it, it, essentially what we wanted to do is, is create something that students could get on with in their own time. And obviously we would incorporate it into, into a, 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 a synchronous session, a live session. But um, these usually start with, um, here's a resource, go and read this resource, and then there's a quiz. And once the students have, have done the quiz, then they move on to the next sort of layer. Um, they, they, once they've mastered that particular area of knowledge, then it unlocks another uh, quiz or assignment for them to do with some more resources. And essentially what, what we've created are, are sort of, uh, I guess, more linear versions of Mastery Paths. And we'll discuss how we've started to move away from the linear a little bit uh, and some, some other aspects that we've, we've included as well. But I, I think as well, Again, I, I said at the beginning, one of the things we'd like to do is, is actually show you one, because again, we've talked around it for a couple of slides, and don't worry, those slides down down the side, it's not it's not a long set of slides. We are we are going to whip through some of these. So we thought one of the best things to do would be to actually show you uh, what one of these looks like. So uh, we've had a little play around, and uh, we've created one. Hopefully, you can see this. Everyone see that? Okay. Can see it now yeah brilliant excellent yeah so um this is in student view in canvas that we use and essentially this is the ljmu systems ones uh, and we have a nice sort of uh, sort of a preamble i guess to to instruct the students on what to do and then the students would then click on on one of these which is setting up your ljmu systems telling them exactly what they need to score to be able to move ahead and there's a little bit of blurb at the beginning and then uh, this one is simply all around the, the academic calendar so students would uh, have a look at the academic calendar which is a very important part of them being with us and then there would be a set of questions that they would have to they would have to uh, answer and once they've got three out of three correct it then unlocks the next next part which is setting up their ljmu systems okay so we've created one to have a little go at um we'll have a look here so we, again we've got some instructions or faux instructions i guess more than anything um with uh my profile we've got matty's profile and obviously the course profile so if you were a student this would be about who are these people and what do they do so we'll just show you how how it would look again the instructions stay at the top and then we've got some questions here so um I wonder if anyone's been listening. What is my second name? 
pop it in the chat if you know, or um, we'll, we'll click on the one that um, gets the most comments. Anything coming through yet? Who cares, maybe? Or clay pot, if you want to be amusing. Um, anything coming through? We've got two, we've got Jim and Leslie that's commented. Okay. What they said? They said Gransden. Okay. All right, then we'll go. We'll go with the consensus. And what program do we teach? Do you remember what we said right at the beginning? Again, just type it in. Anything coming through, Matt? Not as of yet. We are Chantel said Grandson. Oh, Mike said B. So we've got B. So I guess that would be sport management and business. Jim said sport business. So we've got a okay. combination. We've got Chantel that said B as well. So that's sport management and business. Okay. Should we stick with B then? It seems to be the consensus. It seems to be the consensus. Let's go for that. Okay. Here we are. So then this is what the students would see. Unfortunately, um, we didn't get this right. However, um, what we can do within this, as you know, if you've, if you've played around with quizzes, is, is we can put some feedback on some of these. And um, that's what we've done here. So um, we don't uh, partly correct. Go and have a look at the links to our profiles again. So hopefully the students would go back and, and see that we do, in fact, teach sport, but it's, it's actually sport business. So um, once the students have seen this, they can take the quiz again and they have to keep taking the quiz until they demonstrate that they um, have mastered this particular, whatever questions it, uh, it's on, I guess, but mastered this particular area. So if we, if we do it again, sport business, I, I'll add, I put Klingon on beyond. That is actually uh, um, a, a course or was a course in America, uh, Klingon language, just to throw that little tidbit in there for you. So what we have here is, we have the attempts and the beauty of this is we can have a look at each one of these attempts and we can see how many times the students attempted it, how many time, how long they've taken to attempt it. Certainly we'll talk about gaming of the system a little bit on, a little bit later on, but there we are, well done. And we click next and what happens is uh, it now shows us the next one, which is the life and times of Matty. Don't worry, we're not gonna carry on. I just wanted to show you an example. And what happens here is um, we there would be another quiz with some, um, some materials. I'll just come out of this now just to show you what these would actually look like. Certainly one of the larger ones that we've done. So you can see um, this is the one I showed you before, setting up your LJMU system. So the students would uh, have the academic calendar. And once they've uh, scored three, they would unlock this and they would move on to the library service. And then again, they would unlock all these materials as they move along. So this is all around, you know, from getting students getting, getting used to the systems here at university, hopefully with that um, transition as well. So I'll just switch back. Hopefully that gives you an idea and certainly hopefully that makes sense uh, about what a mastery path is. We always find it difficult to sort of explain what it is until you actually show someone um, how they work. And what, as I said before, these, these are very linear, uh, but we will talk about how you could use them and how we're moving, uh, moving away from a bit more of a linear um, use of this so when, when matt and i sort of came up with this we, we found some some interesting papers and and uh, just just some interesting materials out there on on uh, flexible learning pathways and most of them start as i say with with a quiz as i've shown you um now this one from gordon um we had a look at but one of, one of the issues with this was that um depending on how the student did in the initial question um, so if they, they showed mastery of a particular uh, area, then um, they would be given harder questions, whereas uh, others who perhaps didn't do so well in the initial uh, quiz would, would go to the easier questions. But that would mean, of course, as you can see, as you work down, the students would be disadvantaged somewhat and would end up doing uh, uh, only a threshold or, or an e the easiest sort of assignment. And, and we didn't, we felt that was a little unfair, um, but nevertheless, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how uh, you could use something like this. Um, and I'll show you a couple of others as well. So this is one that we certainly, uh, Matty and I had a, a long chat over, which is having a really flexible pathway 
where um, there would be uh, different assignments after the initial one. And depending on how well the students done, they could navigate their way through this. And what will happen is there, there will be, a, a, it looks a bit like blockbusters, if anyone remembers that, but the, they would, a student could go through this and different students might have a different journey, but they all end up with the same equivalent assessments towards the end. Um, and one of the things we've done in this, they are um, formative, but we tell the students that the summative assessment is the one at the end of these sort of layers that we've created. So the students have to go through, uh, certainly for the uh, referencing one, they have to go through three quizzes before they unlock the actual summative assessment, which is worth marks, which as we know, students cover quite, have, uh, quite a lot. So um, this, is, this is essentially what, what we did, is we, we, we got students, as you've seen, to engage in content, to undertake the quiz, to hopefully go back and engage the content if they don't understand it, which unlocks uh, the next layer where students again engage in some new content, undertake a quiz and, and move down all the way through to that final quiz. And again, we've picked or we've chosen so far, should I say, uh, areas for students to do a mastery path on, on things like referencing, things like, well, go and have a look at the systems and, and come back and read through them and tell us, you know, what time the libraries are open or when's help, um, what's the telephone number for the wellbeing department um, in, a, in quite a, a linear fashion. Um, and we've started, we've created, as I say, a referencing one and a, and a sort of setting up LJMU systems. And we've managed to get this across the business school in about uh, three different subjects. And um, we'll show you some results as we move along. Um, but hopefully that that makes sense. I hope it does anyway. We always, as I say, we always struggle to be able to explain what they are until you see one. Um, and this is the, the sort of back of house. They're quite easy to set. I say they're quite easy to set up. They take some time to set up, but once you've set them up, uh, and, and again, this is in Canvas, um, you can quite easily add. Uh, so this year, for instance, we have a, we have the architecture for, for a mastery path. So we can go back to them and add different bits of feedback into them. We can update certainly um, any of the referencing, for instance, or videos that the library have, has, has updated. Uh, and make sure that we have a working mastery path, but it is quite easy after you've set one up. It's quite time intensive at the beginning. Again, the architecture, setting them up, discussing with your team about what, what you want them to actually go and do. But as Matty said, right at the end of the, the first slide he, he talked through, with numbers growing larger and larger, we can we can get these sort of, I don't want to say they're menial tasks, they're not, they're very important tasks at university, but we can get the students to go away, learn outside the classroom uh, and, and apply what they've learned from inside the classroom to uh, something like referencing. And it gets marked automatically through the system. Um, so that's obviously um, really useful uh, for colleagues, but it also means the students can go back through and obviously come and see us afterwards. But for a skill that's so important as they go through university, we found it's um, it's worked quite well. So, Matty, is it? It's back over to you now. I think it is. It is, and I think uh, adding on to what 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 Clay's alluded to there, um, one of or a couple of the reasons why we actually engaged in 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 the use of mastery paths are the fact that, as Clay already made aware, whilst in the short term it might be a bit longer to uh, undertake and put that architecture into place. Actually, over the, the, the long time period, uh, it would save lecturers or any teachers or many members of staff um, viable time in terms of marking. Because what happens, as we saw within the example that Clay alluded to, it gives automatic feedback depending upon how well a student has done with a particular question. Um, and it gives you that immediate automatic feedback that, that the students can see it tangibly, that they can then go back straight away and have a look over over the work again, uh, over the work again at a at a uh, earlier period or a later period of time. Um, I think on top of that, obviously, we're in a situation now whereby um, learning doesn't necessarily have to happen just inside the classroom. 
and we're at a stage whereby students might potentially have um, other commitments that may mean that they might not necessarily be able to attend every single session. And uh, Mastery Path, what that does is it enables students to engage with the content at a later stage, whether that be uh, at three o'clock in the morning or at 9 a.m. in the morning, whatever time suits them to be able to- 5 a.m. 5 a.m. even, yeah. Be able to be, be able to, to to learn viable content that they can then take into into the classroom um, and develop their work moving forward. I think on top of that, it also gives a personalised teaching experience because ultimately that feedback that you get given is immediate, but also relates to and corresponds to the type of answers that you've been given. So, say for example, you got one particular answer wrong, or you got one particular answer wrong and got another one right, that would completely change the, the type of feedback that would be given to them, as opposed to somebody else that got the first question wrong or the second question right. So it gives that personalised teaching experience um, on, on, on top of um, being able to do it within their, within their own time. I think on top of that, and it, it, it's actually quite interesting to see, and there's, there's been research that has been done previously with um, other uh, um, members of staff, and then alongside ourselves that highlight that actually the, the pass rates and failure rates on, on these shows massive, massive differences and discrepancies. And we'll talk through what that looks like um, in our case um, in a couple of in a couple of slides time. What's also important here is that we actually can use the data analytics that are already embedded and built within the virtual learning environment of, of Canvas itself to be able to see what students are doing in terms of how long they're spending on certain elements of that mastery path being able to understand what they're actually um, understanding and not understanding to then be able to tailor our approach even further when we come into inside the classroom so there's a, the, the, there's a, a plethora of, of of reasons through literature that, that that talk around why implementing something such as a mastery path would be effective in in, in this particular situation and scenario So I think looking at looking at some of the results that, that we've had in our um, in our uh, study that we've we've done so far, and, and I guess I'm not going to go into detail of all of these, but what you can see is that there are three courses that within the first year um, implemented implemented Mastery Path. Unfortunately, we don't have any of the, the data available uh, for business with program or the marketing program for, for this year, but it's still something that they're continuing to run um, to this date. However, what's, what's interesting that we can see is that really, uh, regardless of whether the assessment is summative or formative, particularly the LJMU systems, there was a uh, equal number of students that were really taking, taking part and engaging with those, with those mastery paths. So sport business was 80, 86% with business with, it was pretty much 89%. So we can see that the students are actually engaging with that content uh, regardless of whether it would count towards a particular assessment or alternatively was something that was there just to support them uh, moving forward with other alternative pieces of pieces of assessment. Um, I think in terms of referencing as well, and I know it's something that we're, we're, we're going to come on to now, uh, so if Clay wants to go down to the next slide, is that what we've actually found, and this particularly relates to sport business data, is that whilst uh, referencing marks for for the first essay has remained similar. Um, what has actually changed, as you can see in the table below, is that those that would complete the mastery path compared to those that don't, um, there's a marked difference in terms of the number of marks that are associated uh, with referencing. So to give you a little bit of context around this, we get our students to uh, within their first assessment have to obviously reference in which that accounts for 20 percent of that overall assessment and we actually found that of those that completed the referencing mastery path um particularly in in this year uh there was a there was a five mark difference between those that did and didn't complete the mastery path so you can see that that this implementation of this program um and and of this um overall process is, is, is actually making a, a marked difference in terms of students level of understanding on on how to reference just just to add to that matty we can see that before we implemented 
the mastery paths that um, we were seeing sort of similar marks with the students. So we haven't taken anything away from what we're delivering by implementing a mastery path. What we're actually doing is we're sustaining the same level of marks for those that have completed the mastery path against those that would have perhaps done a two or three hour session or longer, multiple sessions on referencing in the classroom. Should we move on to the next one, Matty? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I think just some other notable results um, that, that that need to you might want to be aware of in terms of why why we think this has been this has been suitable to to, to continue over the past couple of years um, is that the module evaluation surveys that we had that have implemented the the, the use of mastery paths in terms of the LJMU uh, systems, which comes in as part of our academic digital literacy skills module, and the referencing mastery path that comes as part of the first module that they do uh, within sport business, which is um, which is all to do with kind of commercialization of sport. Um, but what we've seen overall is that students actually found that the, the the digital resources that were employed, which obviously the mastery path forms part of, was something that was very easy to use, and that the actual assessment tasks again, which connected to the mastery paths, were were were, were clear um, for them to be able to have a good level of understanding to be able to do this independently outside of the of, of the classroom itself now that's not to say that we don't provide some content inside the, the, the classroom it's not as clay said this notion of replacing what, what we've already done it's supplementing what we already do inside the classroom to allow them to engage and get a, a, a more in-depth understanding of that within their within their own time and i think the quotes that provided both in the 22, 23, and 23, 24 um, kind of module evaluation surveys actually actually epitomise that. Um, so I think the 24 comment is something that is particularly interesting to note in that in that actually they found it they found it challenging and something that really stretched them intellectually to be able to do. But at the same time, as a result of being challenged, they they felt that they've actually got better with that particular concept, which in this case is is referencing, which allowed them to be able to then, uh, I guess, have that as a stepping stone to move into the other assessments that are part of the of of the diet that we have um, in the in the course overall. I think a bit of reflection here, Matty. I mean, we we always try to reflect mm. on these as we as we make them every year. I think um, one one of the first issues we had was when we made the first iteration is we didn't put enough feedback in really. Um, so we've had to go back um, and put some more feedback in and try to really, uh, as I showed you in the example there, try to point uh, students in the direction so they don't become too disheartened um, and actually, you know, tell them that they need to go and engage with the materials that we've we, we've told them to engage with. So we've, we, that was that was an issue. Um, I think one of the biggest issues we've had, though, is, is the second one is, is students gaining the system. So certainly in the first iteration, what we found is that students were spending, oh, I don't know, five, ten seconds on each one of those quizzes. And then they were marking down. They must have been marking it down or remembering which answers were wrong and which answers were right. And we could see that. Uh, there was little engagement with the materials that we provided with them, uh, provided with the questions, I should say. So um, we, we've sort of changed what we're doing uh, or changed the way that we've constructed the questions, I guess, is uh, we've moved to creating a much larger bank of questions. So for each one of these sort of uh, resources that we'll get them to, to go and uh, look at, investigate or explore, we're creating sort of 10 to 12 questions of which uh, within Canvas, uh, that they're, they're picked randomly. So, so there'll be three questions that are randomly selected. Um, and for the final quiz, uh, certainly for the referencing one that we do, we actually get the students to type in the answer, which has uh, certainly changed the scores from being very, very high to being a little more challenging and seeing that students are slowing down and having to actually engage with the materials. They realize that uh, they can't gain the system as much. So um, that's certainly one of the biggest changes and biggest pieces of reflection that we've had to do, uh, certainly from the statistics or, or the analytics, I should say, that you can see in Canvas is seeing the, those patterns of behaviour that the students are adopting. 
Um, and we obviously sorry, reflect on the excess. Go on, go on, Matty. Go on. I was going to say, and sorry, on, on top of that, I think that then goes back to the comment that, that was made previously around the differences in marks in that we yeah. can see that by having those blank questions, that actually that has made a massive difference in terms of students' level of understanding um, yeah. in that those that have engaged with the mastery path have then been able to reference more effectively than those that haven't because they haven't been able to just kind of game the system as, as you've already alluded to, which is what happened in the first iteration. We certainly did reflect on the accessibility as well, didn't we, Matty? Um, mm -hmm. And we're quite quite lucky here that, that our students can can pick up a laptop or, or, or um, perhaps use their, their mobile phones or any device that they, they need to. Um, and we tried to make sure that it was mobile friendly as well. Um, to which it is, and it, we haven't had any any issues so far. So accessibility seems to be, uh, we not, I'm not going to say we've cracked it, but certainly it's not an issue that's been highlighted to us from the students. Uh, and the last one was was all around time, resource and, and understanding, really. Um, as I mentioned before, there is a little bit of time and labour uh, that you need to do beforehand, usually over the summer. But once it's set up, it sort of runs on its own. Um, and it's difficult to control the learning experience once it's published. Um, and this is something that we, we reflected on. And certainly this year, we're going to we're going to have more sessions where the students sort of can do or start the mastery path and ask questions. We've had colleagues who've done them in, in sort of programs of 300 and the students really enjoyed it. Um, and there was a there was a sort of bit of competition in the room, which was which was nice as well. And I think one of the biggest one of the you know, one of the biggest sort of reflections we've had is is the idea of using these mastery paths perhaps in other subjects outside of let's say business um, and certainly it does lend itself or seem to lend itself to the sciences a little bit more um, or, or you, you can imagine asking questions that, that have a, a specific answer you know perhaps with something like English language and I've seen examples of this used in English language it, it is very different and it is a certainly uh less linear shall we say but there is that you know i don't know what what sort of programs uh, some of you teach teach on or taught on but uh, some of you might be thinking well yeah this could work for my students some of you be thinking well this just wouldn't work at all uh, but that's something we've reflected on sort of the 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 adaptability of, of something like this uh, across other programs and one of the things we've done is is as I say, we, we've created a more robust set of questions as we move forward. One of our colleagues this year uh, had our students read a report and then the students had to type in the answers and pretty much all of them were, were typing answers. And we saw a, a much wider, broader range of results than perhaps um, the sort of more multiple choice questions that we've used in the past. Um, and just really to, to sum up some concluding thoughts, I guess, um, We've, we've been doing this, as I say, for, for quite a while now, I think three to four years now in various guises. And we've been lucky to be able to move past our program and into the different departments within the business school. Uh, we've also done some work with uh, Vietnamese University, the Hanoi University of Technology. And I guess some of our concluding thoughts that, that Matty, and I, Matty and I always have around, around the use of something like this, or even, I guess, um, technology and learning is, does it facilitate the learning inside the classroom? And in this case, it does. And, and it certainly facilitates learning outside of the classroom. And where those two things take place, we try to sort of, this is more the hook, I guess, for, for academics or, or colleagues. Does it save time and resources uh, where appropriate? And this seems to be the big hook for our colleagues, certainly when we've shown uh, colleagues what we're doing. Uh, certainly in, in the three, 300 plus uh, business with course, um, they've been, they've loved it because it means that they can apportion a, you know, a little 10% or a little 5% to a, to a mastery path. And it's automatically, um, automatically marked, but it also gives them a little bit of space in those, in those sessions. Whereas I said before, you might do a couple of sessions on referencing or you might you might have a, a sort of a recurring theme. It gives a little bit more space to perhaps do uh, some of the other aspects that you want to you want to teach the students. And I think, Matty, that's that's really all we, we didn't want to go on too long. I feel like we have gone on a bit, but, um, you know, 
I guess we'll open up to some questions in a, in a second, but if you're interested in any of this, uh, we have a paper that we, we've uh, just published, probably September, wasn't it? Oh, it's on the screen, September, there you go. And, um, you know, if you're interested in any of this or you want to collaborate at all or, or you want to know more or, I don't know, uh, just get in touch with us. Uh, we, we'd love to help more people uh, and share, uh, share this as, as far and wide as we can. Um, Matty, do you want to add anything to the end there? No, I think I think as Clay just alluded to, it it really is something that we're we're, we're really interested in in developing even further and making it into something that that is used cross cross universities because we we've seen the value in it for, for our students, um, and it would be great to kind of allow that to be to be transferred over to to, to other institutions as well. Thanks, Matt and Clay. That's a fantastic presentation and a really interesting example of trying to use the tools at hand and trying to also measure the impact that they're having. So obviously, if anybody's got any questions, you can drop it in the chat or stick your hand up. But I'm bursting with questions too. Okay, so um uh on one of the slides oh here we go really interesting we are doing something similar using quizzes to develop student confidence numerous skills in life sciences leslie do you want to collaborate can you come <laughs> on the mic now if you do or share your email if you don't mind sharing it um i'm sure there might be a crossover here that might lead to something interesting. Oh, Leslie, you're on. Hi, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, right, Leslie. I, I, I'm actually the the e-learning officer for our life sciences portfolio at the University of Glasgow. The the uh, principal academic is uh, Dr. Kirsten Knox, and and this is something that we've been developing a just over the last few months, so it's brand new to us. And of course, in, in life sciences, it is an, a new subject. I, and we find that, that students are, it, it's confidence. They don't have confidence in their own numeracy skills. So we're looking at using our VLE as Moodle. So functionally, it's the same as, as Canvas, really. I, but uh, so we we've developed a, a bank of questions and we've designed some quizzes, I, going from a, an easy level to a more difficult level at this stage. I and and we really we've just gone through our first run of it and we're still to evaluate it to see if I, it has impacted on students. Exams are coming up, so we might actually have some data. Uh, around the the results of the, the exams to, and compare them with uh, the the logs and the completion of the quizzes to see if it has had an impact on the students. That sounds very great, Leslie. Clay, do you want to or Matt, do you want to get back on that particular? Oh. I was just going to say, I know, I know, we use Canvas and, and Mastery Paths is, is is obviously a. a, a something you can turn on and off in, in, in Canvas. But I know that Moodle, you can do something similar. Um, and I, and I've, I didn't mention it because we've, we've done lots of iterations of this, but we, we've done um, an iteration of, I've done an iteration of months where uh, the students, if they didn't get the questions right, that we created remedial uh, uh, sort of materials for them to, to, again, help with that confidence. Uh, and obviously the students that did well enough move on but those students that keep getting the questions wrong and are really struggling, we created extra sort of videos and resources for them. And again, that's that more kind of less linear, I guess, uh, mastery path. Um, but as I say, it's it's you can do that in in Moodle as well. But it is it is obviously the setup is is slightly different. Yeah, yeah, we we kind of uh, basing it on the completion and restriction. I right, so complete this, we move on to the next kind of thing. Right. I've also been experimenting with the, the close question type. I, oh, excuse me, the dogs woke up. I, and, and 
I've been thinking that the closed question type offers us the opportunity to build out worksheets, online worksheets, yes. that would also maybe help facilitate uh, students working through and, and getting immediate feedback in their own time. Yeah, I think I think that's what it's that's that's one of the, the beauties of it is you know um, if you can work it into a session, students can go away and they can they can get that feedback nice and. Uh, as Matty was saying before, automatically, and it's certainly if they get the questions wrong in a closed, closed question format, then you can, you know, if you went into real detail, you could, you know, say where they've gone wrong or, or um, you know, point them to, to other resources perhaps to help them get the correct answer. So yeah, I think it's uh, it, it probably, as as we were saying before, it works well in in, in sciences and with with certain um objectives in mind i guess thanks, um, thanks for that we, sorry we we also have a induction course around digital skills and having yeah. seen your presentation today i'm thinking wow well, we could really use that as as a template in a way to to redesign yeah. I, that course because at the moment it, for me it has a feel more of a document repository and it's not yeah. really guiding students through the digital skills uh, that we feel they need to be successful in their courses. Sure, Leslie, we, you know, we'd be happy to uh, to share yeah. the architecture of, of what we've done for sure. Yeah. I'd just like to go back to one of your previous slides, which was the difference between the programs. So you had a diagram of of a number of different did, yeah. you don't have to show it now but that's okay two yeah. were incredibly positive um you know you had two courses up in the uh, uh, you know late 80 percent of um students engaging much higher than i expected and then there was one that was more you know what i expected to be more in the uh, early 50 percent and, and stuff like this so it, have you reflected at all on the difference between those two adoptions then? Yeah, I think I think um, we, uh, when Matty was talking through these, um, we didn't want to go into too much detail, I guess, but um, some of them were form formative. So when we originally started doing Mastery Paths, uh, we, we incorporated them into courses and they used them as a formative assessment. And then the following year, it became a summative assessment. And so we saw some differences there, obviously as you'd imagine you would however um i know that there was there was some uh i don't know the best way to put it but there were some issues in, in one of the courses i think there was uh some staffing uh issues etc um which which potentially impacted uh the, the the percentages on on one of those uh programs i think at the time that's right matty isn't it yeah and i think and i think uh, uh... One of the one of the key things that I probably missed out on that, that that is important, as I said, is that with these with these mastery paths, it wasn't just a situation whereby it was, okay, here's a mastery path, go away and do this by yourself. There was an element of that these were embedded into the classroom yeah. itself, so that we would provide some content that related to that, and then said, okay, as part of this now, here's some more information on this mastery path that actually for for us anyway, and I know for a business with accounts towards part of an assessment that's due whereas i know for the one that potentially had the lower the, the lower percentage yeah. they didn't they didn't integrate it as much into the into the classroom setting itself which thereby kind of just left the students to their own devices that was oh by the way here's a mastery path go and have a look at it if you want whereas the other two in terms of uh, sport business and business with were very a bit more hands-on with it and going you need to do this we're going to start this now but then you need to finish it in your own time so there was a little bit more kind of directive teaching there um as opposed to that kind of okay go away and do this by yourself which happened with the with, with the small percentage group jim just just to add to that as well that these um these numbers aren't the students that have completed it at the end of the course. This is just the first time that they mm. attend, first attempt numbers as well. So those numbers actually go up um, in the oh. referral, referral, deferral period as well. But we just wanted to put up the first attempt ones because, you know, um, we found them to be more interesting, I guess. 
Um, obviously, yeah. with a referral, then they, they do jump up by sort of 10, 15 percent in some cases. Uh, so the ones that are in the 80s jump up into the into the high 90s. Yeah, because, you know, it is a well-known sort of uh, trope, I expect, that when we try and develop something sophisticated like this, there's academics that will just say uh, they're not going to do it, you know. And um, and in some cases that is so, you know. So there's this magic key or, or, or part of the solution is the level of integration that you, you're putting in there. Um, I think I think with that, Jim, is is that we can we can just cut and paste once we've created it in our own canvas yeah. course or, or on, on VLE, yeah. we can just cut and paste it into another. And yeah, as I say, yeah. the, the 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 fact that it marks itself um, certainly is is a big hook for other colleagues. Uh, certainly with the larger sort of three hundred students on. And I know you're both really busy academics and very busy developing this as well, but. Um, with the f further research of this, the the opportunity to try and learn what the students are struggling with, uh, you know, from this type of thing, it's is that something you're going to look at, or is that something that offers itself very easily through the analytics, or if it, you know, where are you? So a mixed. Going? A mixture of analytics uh, is being reviewed at the moment, but we've also just uh, we're waiting for our ethics form to come back. And the next step is to uh, is to do focus groups across the business school in in different uh, in the different subjects that have that have done it. And, and again, they, each each subject or program does it in a different, slightly different way. So that, that's the next step, really, is, is to do some some focus groups with students and also sort of discuss how it helped with their transitions uh, from from sort of higher education to oh sorry yeah to higher education yeah 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 um, you mentioned about game in the system as well <laughs> and that yeah because uh, uh, speaking for somebody who has to complete various different online modules around bribery and these sorts of things Indeed. you know, yeah. you, know you, you um this is perhaps common across higher education and most businesses you know that that you get weary of that kind of interaction that yeah. is, is that something you're concerned with because because um what yeah is that something you're concerned with well, I know it's Matty were actually talking about Matty and I were talking about this the just the other day. We we our students only do two of these at level four, so our first year. Uh, we only have one across the whole program in our in our second year, and we don't do them in in our third year. And I think that's something else we could have spoken about today. Uh, but again, we would have ended up with three hundred slides. But the the yeah. the appropriateness uh, of of this particular assessment. Um, with the levelness as well of, of that particular year. Um, obviously trying to get students to be critical up the top end and sort of level six or third year. Um, this perhaps in, in the iterations that we have already uh, doesn't lend itself very well uh, to, to that sort of uh, level. Whereas at level four, we we're asking them to go and sort of explore and answer questions on um, it, it's, it lends itself very well to that, um, where our colleague who in the second year has gotten to read a report and to, you know, do a little bit of maths and be a little bit, um, you know, go that little step beyond. Um, it seems to work well as well, but but we haven't yet done it at level six. So as Matty mentioned before, it's part of a sort of varied diet of assessment that, that we have. Um, but I think, yeah, there would, if we had this in every module, I think, or, or even more than the amount that we have already, I think there would be a little bit of um, fatigue over, over this type of assessment, for sure. Yeah, but it's a lovely experimental scenario, isn't it, that you've created for yourself. And one, one way of exploring that is that idea of, of gaming. And, and you'll see, possibly, you, you can through looking at the data, um, 
we might be able to spot those types of behaviors. I don't know. Whenever I've sort of clicked the buttons on the bribery module, I've always thought, do they know? <laughs> <laughs> Do they know whether I've I've done this or whether you know? Um, and it's, it's, I'm sure it's you know perhaps an interesting area to help the the whole you know wider world of learning technology understand when what trips people in to <laughs> that sort of behaviour. You know, and, and that's what, an interesting one, Jim. Actually, hmm. that's I mean it's yeah. one that we've looked at a lot, and and we have sort of looked in, with certainly in the first and second iteration really looked into some of the students that have taken a very small amount of time but actually um, have maybe done eight attempts on a, on three questions and that's what got us thinking about right well how do we stop this from happening how do we stop students from essentially just clicking every button in a random order until they get the right mark until they get the sort of answers and there's no learning taking place there or, or very little learning taking place um, so that's one of the reasons we've created the banks and that's certainly one of the reasons that we've, we've we're moving towards students typing the answers in or, or you know uh, and that has certainly stopped a lot of the uh, uh, it, gaming issues so far not not all of them but but it is it is a really interesting and it's certainly actually something we'll, we'll probably add to to uh, the focus groups i think yeah yeah that, that you know that, that's a reoccurring theme, isn't it? And I, I have to admit, I've never looked at the literature, so there may be papers already in existence about mm. that particular topic, but getting further evidence on what trips people towards that type of behavior. And, you know, I don't mind having an interview with you about my experiences in the bribery module. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's, that, it's that kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, so, Mike. Yeah. So, um, uh, there's three more minutes to go. Um, uh, I think maybe this is the right time. Oh, thank you for sharing this work. Yeah, mastery paths. Okay. Thanks, Another Mark. Little um, uh, tip for you there. Uh, we will be creating a blog about this, which will be shared at the uh, on the alt site. So you'll be able to catch up with um, Clay and Matt there if you want to hook up with them again um, and find out their details. And um, yeah, and hopefully we'll see a lot more research in this area uh, coming through and helping us understand that. So. Thank you very much, Clay and Matt. Um, and uh, I don't know if you want to stay on the line for a little chat afterwards. I don't know. For sure, yeah. Or, yeah, we can do, yeah. 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 Oh, Leslie may be in contact. That would be good. Thanks, Leslie. Yeah, if we need any help with, with anything, just, just reach out to us for sure. Yeah. I'll do. Thank you. Thoroughly really enjoyed the session. No problem. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks. Thanks, Gav. Yes. Oh. Caps just going, I think. Okay, um, we got, uh, let's turn off the thingamy, hold on a sec.